last week on Jig Heads. <laughs> <laughs> Lake Nipigon right there. Oh, look, look at the size of that trout. Nice fish. Oh, man. I feel better now the pressure's off. Yeah. <laughs> I've had to, You're I've had pretty to, stressed yesterday. I've had to listen to these guys for <laughs> last two days telling me I don't know how to fish. <laughs> now that is a beast. The beast in the half. <laughs> I don't know, Jeremy. That's going to be awfully close to yours. Uh, I don't know. Well, these fish might be turning on. Let's get this one in the box. Let's get those lines down. That was two lines in the water. Like I said, we've been out here for four days. And Jeremy got that one. But this could be the day that they turn on. I think it's a, I think it's a lake trout, dude. Seriously? Yeah, it's a lake trout. day four of our Lake Nipigon Lake Trout Adventure. Our plan for today is to make the 20 mile journey back to the spot where Jeremy boated our first fish. Unfortunately, the waves this morning are just a little too big for us to make the trip. Instead, we are revisiting some of the more productive looking water from yesterday to see if any of the fish from the graph have gone on the feed. While setting my first line, I had one just about pull the rod out of my hand. Without a doubt, this 20 pounder was hungry. The big question now is whether or not we should make the move if the lake decides to calm down. What we got going on right now is it, it typically it looks like it likes to blow in the morning. And this morning it was pretty rough. We wanted to go 20 miles, but we didn't quite make it. It was just too, uh, too rough. So what we did is we came out to an area we fished yesterday. Just kind of been tooling around here a little bit. We got that fish right off the bat. We're going to go through a few marks here where some other fishermen caught in the past. And as this water lays down, if it does keep laying down, we're going to take a ride if we don't hit anything else here. Go to our final destination where we were supposed to go this morning. We saw a lot of fish on the locator when we were there the other day, so that's the plan. For those of you that don't really know what downrigger fishing is, what you've got is basically it's like a big rod sticking out, a big reel, and you got steel line on there. The steel line goes down, you're going to lower it with a lead ball. Lead ball can go anywhere from 5 pounds to 14 pounds, depending on how fast you're trolling, how deep you're trolling. And what you have on that ball is you have a downrigger release. It's just like a clothespin, you know, it's not a clothespin, but same mechanism. You know, you put anything in there, it clamps down on it, holds it tight, you pull on it, it comes up. Typically, you can't lower that ball until you have your line from your rod with your lure on it clipped into that downrigger release. Then you lower the ball along with your bait at the same time. So with these strike savers that Randy and John have, 
you just drop the balls right away. There is no release on these balls. You don't have to mess with anything. You get your bait out, you hook it up to the strike saver, it's the same kind of release, but this release goes up and down the cable. So you can, if you see fish at 20 feet and you have those downrigger balls at 100 feet, you can crank those things up. Not the downrigger ball, but you can crank up that strike saver. It rides right up that wire line and you're right in the zone. Say you're fishing 100 feet down. Your line's going down at an angle. That, so you got maybe 110 feet, 115 feet of monofilament line, spider wire, whatever it is, going down to the ball. Say the, the fish are really spooky for some reason. You're out like on Lake Michigan, for instance, and you got to be trolling some of these spoons and, and lures 50 feet behind the ball. Well, now you're getting closer to 200 feet of line. Okay, you got a good 50, 60 feet of slack when that fish grabs that bait pulls it out of the release, and you've got so much give, barbless hooks, you've got to have a tight line at all times, otherwise you're going to lose that fish. And with the strike saver, that, that hook, you get the release and the hook. When that release pops, when that fish grabs it, that line gets caught with the hook. Your line is only moving this far. That's no give, that's, that's nothing, no slack. Tight line the entire time, about 10 feet before you get to the surface as you're fighting the fish, the line slides off that hook, fish in the boat. You're gonna catch a lot more fish. You're gonna put a lot more fish in the boat with this strike saver. It's a pretty cool thing. He's on there. <laughs> He's already up, he's already up. He's up, he's up. He's up. <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> Watch it back. Watch it back. Got him? Yeah! Yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> right. This one was a little lazy. <laughs> Look at the colors on that one. Oh. That's a good looking fish. Oh, cow. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that has a little bit different color than the two that we saw earlier. That, that is really, really pretty, pretty fish. Nice. <laughs> I was snoozing and Jason's like, Fish, fish, fish! I didn't know what was going on, where to go, where to look. Wow. Lake I think, I think I got you, man. <laughs> yeah, you got me, yep. I still got you one up, though. <laughs> yeah, but it's my turn. I'm just trying to make you feel better. <laughs> where do those fish come from? Uh, we were just off a, off a hump in about uh, 80 feet of water when that one hit. And we were down 45 on that downrigger. <sighs> I'll tell you what, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> that was quick, man. That was quick. I didn't know which rod he was on. Just snoozing. Guess what, it's my turn. I don't even know where my glasses went. The fact that that rod pumped for a good 30 seconds before Jeremy was able to get to it, it's just proof that the strike saver works because before strike saver, that fish would have been gone. If you wouldn't have been on that rod, as soon as that fish hit, you would have lost it. There's no, no tension on that line. There's a good chance that if it wasn't Jeremy's turn, <laughs> and we were fighting for that rod, we would have had it reeled in before he would have even known what happened. <laughs> Stay tuned. Jig Heads will be right back. Welcome back to Jig Head. The clouds are starting to break and the wind has died down enough for us to pursue our original destination. The move is definitely a gamble, but if these trout are turning on, we are confident this new area will produce big fish. It's starting to warm up. We just got off the boat ride. Kind of rolling the dice here. We're taking a gamble. Not the smartest thing to leave when you You've already caught two, but you know, like I said, we're going after the monsters. And if 
they're turning on, this is where we want to be. Sun's coming out, it's my turn. Putting on the glasses, it's game time. Crazy thing is, is we were heading for one area and we we're just kind of making a straight line. And we noticed what looked like seagulls just dive bombing the heck out of the water, which means, hey, there must be smell getting pushed to the top. Where there's smell, there's usually lake trout. We found out, we got in here, they're turns. Turns eat fish. So something was going on over here. They were feeding. Whether the lake trout were pushing them up to the surface, well, I guess we'll never know. But we're gonna check this area out real quick and see if it might mean big monster laker. It's kind of a gamble to pick up and go. The fish were biting where we were, but I mean, this is the spot where the monsters are, so it's gotta keep putting in the time, and that's what we're doing. That's what we came up here to do. We came up here to hunt big lake trout, and you can't expect numbers when you're looking for those big fish. It just, it's a whole different ball game, you know? And whether you fish muskies, whether you fish walleyes, whether you fish lake trout, panfish, if you're looking for big fish, you can't expect a lot. But I tell you what, when something hits one of these rods, you know it's gonna be huge. And it's, it's worth the wait. You can't even describe the feeling. We've been going back and forth, back and forth out in this water, going over these underwater humps. Kind of feels like you're just combing the water. And that's pretty much what, you, what you're doing. You've got, you know, four lines down between 40 and 60 feet, and you're just trolling those lines back and forth, back and forth, and you're waiting for one of those fish to just get hungry and come up and smack one of those lures. It's not for everybody, but for Jeremy and I and Randy and John. It's one heck of a rush. This thing went screaming, man. You should have seen him hit that thing. Holy man. I was staring at it again when it happened. This is huge. Randy, I'm gonna need some crank. Crank and then reel. Yeah, get rid of that one. I don't even want to try reeling this thing, yeah. Take your time. The way this thing took off right off the bat, holy man, this is like a king salmon. The last time I checked, Nipigon doesn't have salmon. No salmon here. We're making sure we get all the balls up, all the rods, reels, everything out of the way. This ain't your ordinary lake trout fishing. We're trophy hunting here. These things are huge. 30 pounder, come all, on. All the lines are coming in. Holy, that thing smacked it. You know what's crazy is that that rainbow just popped out. As soon as we saw that thing, just poof! John just down said, to the bottom. That's where they're at. This might be the treasure at the end of the end of the rainbow here. Oh! There's nothing better than the sound of a screaming drag. Nothing better. Nothing better. I don't think this thing knows he's hooked anymore. He's just sitting there. <laughs> We're in neutral. We're just sitting here, and I mean, I can't. This thing is just solid. Woo! I'll, I'll get that long. I, I, I seriously, I seriously don't think this thing knows he's hooked. I think he came up and hit that spoon like he was hitting a smelt and just took off. I, this, this is fighting totally different than that last one. I'm scared to bring this thing up. Oh. <laughs> Well, we're off the strength, David. Looks like you guys are off the hook. <laughs> you lose it now, it's your own fault. This is solid, man. This is a fish. This is nothing like that, that first fish I reeled in. Holy buckets. It's quite the operation we got going on here. All the lines have come out of the water. We're at the band, we're at the band. Oh, look at that thing. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. We got time, we got yeah. time. You know what? Guess what lure it hit? Yep, that's a hot lure. Nice. Nice. That was a fighter. You know, it's not as big as I was I was expecting, 
But it's still about a 15 pound fish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna pull this thing out real quick. Look at the size of this trout. It's bigger than I thought. Oh. We're gonna take some quick. Yeah, if you can pull that, I just don't want to get my fingers in its gills. I can keep it by the tail here. Lake Nipigon Lake Trout. This thing thought it was a king salmon. This is a beautiful fish. We're going to put it back in the water. See if we can't do that again. Nice. That is awesome. Oh, 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 oh. All right, come on. We're going to just hold him there. Let him do his thing. What a fish, holy man. There he is, there he goes. That was nuts. That fish, when it hit, it just took that rod and drove it right into the water. It, just... it wasn't as big as I thought, but you know what? That thing fought like a 30 pounder. I can't imagine, I can't imagine what's to come. This lake is incredible. That's four releases today, three fish. Like we said earlier, we've been out here for four days now. The first uh, two, first three, we had one fish, and now the fish are turning on. We saw those turns, those turns dive bombing earlier. There's a good chance they were picking, picking minnows off the top. We've got a ton of fish up ahead. They're kind of pooled into this little cove where the water's been pounding the shoreline. And oh man, we got plenty of daylight left. We gotta get Jeremy a fish, and then uh, we'll do it all over again. Stay tuned, Jig Heads will be right back. Welcome back to Jig Heads. I'm on Lake Nipigon, somewhere where I've always wanted to go. I'm fishing lake trout, not any lake trout. Mo fish, 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 yeah! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo! Yes! <laughs> yeah, you it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's down hey, we here. We got a lot of lines. Stay off the wheel. We're what we got here control. is we put on a long line. We're thinking that these fish are going to be coming up. This thing stopped. You know, this time of day, these fish come up to feed. We thought, you know what? Let's throw one back a ways, get it up out of the downrigger balls get it up a little bit, maybe 25 feet below the surface, and just see what happens. You know, we've had these dry spells up here, which, I mean, <laughs> is totally cool because these fish are such hogs, but dry spells make you think. It's, it gets the mind going, you're like, geez, we should try this, we should try that, we should try this. This fish, dude, I have not gotten anything on this thing. You know that, don't you? To the right Holy cow. I'm heading out. What? So we put this know. line out <laughs> and it hasn't been 10 minutes and we were just talking, Jeremy, you got 10 minutes <laughs> and scored. This is a big, big fish. Holy cow. Holy cow. Randy, what do we have for depth when we hooked up? Uh, we were at about 160 feet. 160 feet deep, and this is running 25 feet down. It feels like I'm snagged on the bottom. We're not moving. We're basically in neutral right now. And I can't move this fish! <laughs> <laughs> nice job, man. Holy cow. You got all night, so take your time. I'm going to take my time. I've been waiting a long time for my turn. <laughs> I'm gonna savor it. He's coming, but he's coming slow. And I've got all day. I've got all day. You guys had trouble with these fish getting caught up in the other lines? Well, you can have that, yeah, it, absolutely. Too many things can happen with these big fish. You never know what they're gonna do. Better to get the lines up, be in neutral if we can. Today we got to move a little bit into the wind because of the waves. But we're going to play this fish on this side. What we did here is we just turned the bolt. We're going to head back in. 
there's a reef that we don't want to get up on because this, this trout has so much line out, so much structure down on the bottom. We are on the lead core. We got two colors got out. 50 feet, you got 100 feet to go. How far, John? I think it's 50 feet of lead and 50 feet of mono. All right, we hit the mono. We're on the mono. <laughs> okay. Jeremy, he might not be done. He might go down again. You never know. I'm checking this boy drag. Don't, don't give him. I gotta go down on the star drag to let, let loose here, right? I know that thing is just bent all right, right over. Alright, there's the weight, there's the weight. Oh, 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 Get on him! Oh, 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 oh. That one's a Holy net. cow! Look at the size of that wing drone! <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> He's bigger than yours! <laughs> Holy crap! Nice job. Look at that, Jason. Oh Lake Dipagon Lake Trout! <laughs> nice! That thing has got a huge head! Woo. Yes! Oh my goodness. Look at that, Jeremy, Jason! Look at the size of that! That thing. is a beast! <laughs> Thank you, John and Randy! <laughs> oh! We want to get this guy back in the water, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. The melon on it down. All right, let's get her down. Woo! Quick boy. Thirty-nine. Oh. Take your time and make sure that thing goes back. Oh. Look at the head, Jason. You got the fever? I got the fever! <laughs> Look at that fish, you guys! Uh-oh, it's three to two in the third period now. Three to two. <laughs> what do you think, dude? I think that I'm gonna have a really hard time fishing anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> you got the fever now, don't I got you? The fever. He's got the fever, Jays. <laughs> uh, yeah. Trophy, trophy hunt. Trophy hunt in Lake Charles. Once in a lifetime fish. I'm loving it. <laughs> Look at that fish! That thing hit while the rod was in my hand. <laughs> fish, 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 fish! Yeah! Woo! There he goes, there he goes, there he goes! <laughs> Get on him! <laughs> that one's a Holy in cow! Look at the size of that lake drone! <laughs> Dude, the thing's huge! Holy fuck, it's this thing is heavy. Are you barely <laughs> oh. Oh. Holy man! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> He's bigger than yours! <laughs> These aren't ordinary Lakers. <laughs> <laughs>